Welcome back. Now we're going to get into our second example of how to use filters. Sometimes we want to limit what's in a dropdown, a many to one dropdown. We want to only allow certain relationships to be created. Since you've already been playing with filters, this should be pretty easy, but we're going to walk you through it step by step. So let's get into it. The relationship that we're going to be restricting is our warehouse on the sales order. Our company has a network of warehouses and stores and only some of those ship out to customers. So we want to limit the warehouses that can be selected on a sales order to those that have the capability to ship to our customers. So I promised you that I'd walk you through this bit by bit. First, we want to be in developer mode so that we have some tools that we need here. Now we're gonna go into sales and we're gonna make sure that we understand the relationship that we're limiting here. So we come into other info and we look at warehouse. This is what we wanna limit. So looking at it, our relation, the very bottom of this black box is stock.warehouse. So we want to limit that down based on certain criteria. So we're going to go to a view that has this same model, stock.warehouse. Once we're here, we need to find something effective to filter off of. Currently, we could potentially use the name, it'd be distribution or name contains distribution. But to be honest, I don't really like filtering off of names because somebody could accidentally put in the wrong name. It's not as exact as some other ways we could go about this. So instead of relying on that, we're gonna add another little Boolean field here. So let's go into Studio real quick and let's drag across this new Boolean. And we're going to go ahead and call this allow customer distributions. And let's make sure we throw it in our form view as well, just to keep things nice and clean. So we're gonna to go to existing fields, we're going to allow, and we're going to throw this in just above right here, okay? Now let's go ahead and close out a studio and let's make sure that our information is correct. So we're going to allow customer distributions for distribution two and for distribution one. So now we're good. We're all set up for this. Now let's build our filter. So our filter for this one is pretty dang simple. We're just gonna go to add custom filter. We're gonna say allow customer distributions is set, meaning it's true, which means it's checked. We're gonna go ahead and add that. And that limits our list nicely. Now let's pop on over to the sales order and we're going to add this filter as a domain. So go ahead and click into other info and we're going to go to our warehouse here and we're going to click into our domain. Now, if you've been paying attention, you'll recognize that this looks exactly like the filter builder that we have on the list view. The reason I've had you build it in the list view first is so that we can see the records that pop up after the fact without us closing out a studio, coming back in, going through different iterations of this filter. We can see what we have in the list view first and then we can apply it as our domain. So let's go ahead and grab our code from our warehouse list view. We're gonna drop it into the code editor here. Make sure everything checks out. We'll confirm this. Okay, give it a second. Go ahead and close out. Now let's create a new quotation and see if this worked properly. So we wanna come down here and we should only be able to select distribution one or distribution two. So that wasn't anything too crazy, but you can see the power of a tool like this to make it so that your users are more efficient. If we were to take this one step further, you could actually make it so that one dropdown filters another dropdown. We'll go ahead and cover that in our next video, but for now, thanks for watching and good luck.